I do think men can feel emasculated. I think you can feel, I mean, ask any guy who's been cheated on. Have you cheated or been cheated on? I've been cheated on. Uh, I've not cheated. What makes, for, for people listening who have been cheated on, you kind of mentioned this, like, one, how did you return to, to your strength, to your, you know, to this sort of beautiful, strong, honest self right now? Uh, well and then two, what, what, makes, what makes men cheat? I got It's man enough, so I'm well, asking. I can answer that question. Really. You got that? Go. Oh, I can answer that. No, no. I mean the second one. That's the first one, but I can. I can tell you the second right. one. What did I do? I mean therapy. Um, yeah. At first, when you get cheated on, you feel embarrassed and you feel pity for yourself. You feel shame. I spent a lot of time getting to know my ego, um, and so that's that's really helped me as a guy who's never cheated. I don't know if I can answer that accurately. I can only guess. I have a better answer for why people might cheat because, you know, I've been cheated on by women um, and I have guy friends who cheated. And I think, again, it, it literally comes down to not being enough, I think, for those people. To me, cheating isn't even about the sex. It's about the lack of trust or, you know, things like that. And so not feeling enough and then seeking this out in, in more toxic forms rather than dealing with it or maybe going to their partner and saying, hey, I'm, I'm yeah. not feeling I'm not, I'm not getting what I need. Maybe it's not from you. Maybe it's from myself. And, I'd, and instead of talking through your partner and feeling having that safe space to talk, you know, uh, they just react and, and go out and, and find that whatever it is they feel like they're missing somewhere else. I love it. I think you spoke to a lot greater. I mean, I, by the way, when I raise my hand, like I can speak to that. I, 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 I want to be clear, that's not me speaking with a lot of pride. Like, oh, I've cheated, so therefore yeah. I'm... Sure. I've cheated my whole life. Really? My whole life. Why? I mean, I'd love to hear what, why. Well, that's, this episode's not about that, so, I, <laughs> so it's hard to go into it because it's it, but I, but I can just give a perspective that maybe is a condensed. So when I say I cheated my whole life since I was my first girlfriend, um, since I was 11, I was not faithful in one form or another, right? Sure. I wasn't having sex, but whatever that meant. Until my marriage now, which is my third marriage, and um, we've been together 11 years, and I'm faithful and clean. And, Congrats, man. That's awesome. Um, um, but I had never been, and I had not been faithful with people that I fucking love and adore. Sure, yeah. My ex-wife, who is one of my favorite people in the world, um, was unfaithful and hurt her and hurt people around me. And the families of the families, you know, it's not just the person that you're cheating on, but it's their parents and their siblings and the people that believe in it. And, and then you see the, I use this term like, you know, you burn people. And then it's not just a one-time burn. You see the scars of the burn of the people that you hurt forever. I see certain families and I go, oh, man, you see their arm. You're like, I, I was the cause of that fire, mm -hmm. you know? And you're reminded of your, what, the damage that you've done. I think it's different for different people. I don't always think it's because you're, someone doesn't feel that they're enough. I think it's two things what, in my experience and the work that I've done for men. One is there's trauma that we have that oftentimes is not ever dealt with, mm -hmm. right? Modeled what we saw, what we did. We didn't get to talk it out. We were not um, t taught to discuss things with other friends that were deeper, which I love that you've done. Your mom did with you. My mom also did this with me. And then also a respect and regard for the sacredness of relationships or marriage or um, monogamy or another person to really, I think that society has, men are now so many, as I have four kids, two of them are boys, my 20 year old, who's raised in a culture as I was, where to get more at all expenses, to not consider how other people are affected. That if I cheat, um, it's not really cheating because we're not married. Mm -hmm. It's only for marriage. And if I'm married, oh, it's okay because we're not really happy and it's okay. And mm -hmm. also the lack of God, because God is also the one who has said, you know, for many people who have a, a, a marriage, believe in some sort of idea that you are staying true to the laws beyond your own made up laws. So I think the lack of respect for something greater than yourself causes many people to these lines to be blurred. So there are good people that cheat that at the core they're good people, 
but have the boundaries are so blurred now, what's wrong or right, you make terrible choices and you hurt a lot of people, not because they're evil, not because I don't know the woman that cheated on you, but m- most likely was decent enough person that you saw her in the beginning to think she was decent. So I think one of the ways through it in my work for cheating and for cheating men is first to understand like every action, like how does it, aside from what I need, how is this affecting her? How does this affect humanity, the world, like my children, the people around? Do you understand the fire that you're starting? Do you know this is a fire? It's a fucking fire that goes forever. Do you understand that after that, no one trusts you anymore? Do you understand that what are, it's just, most of the time it's in sex, most of the time. It's not always sex, it's conversations too. It can be late night conversations that are inappropriate. It's mm-hmm. not sex. But all of those things, if I think is a lack of understanding. And if all the men that I've spoken to through the work I've done, most of them are good people. They're not just guys that just throw away. And there's this common thing of some sort of trauma and also having no regard really for relationships. It's common. Mm. Yeah. Um, not to make an excuse, I'm not saying it's okay that these people are, like myself, I do not deserve to be married a third time to the woman that I'm married to that have 10 years of marriage. I don't deserve it. It just shows God's mercy to me or that you know we always have an opportunity to redeem ourselves possibly. But, um, but there are, most people I think are decent, good people that um, need, that don't have the framework, that don't have these conversations so that they can learn. Yeah, and I can completely agree. I mean, I think I couldn't agree more that I don't think you know, people who cheat are bad people. And I I'd absolutely, I know you can, I know people uh, can be in love and still cheat. You know, I don't think it's really, it's not about. It's not about love. It's not oh. really, a, yeah, it's it's about some, um, not being, you know, I often say no one lies to you more than you lie to yourself. Um, you know, as someone who's a, a, an overthinker, and I talk to myself a lot. You know, so I have an opportunity to lie to me more than anyone else does. Uh, and and, and kind of like you were saying before, it's just like it's, it's easy to make excuses or convince ourselves, I'm not really doing this. Like, I don't know, like a rub and tug's not cheating. It's just, you know, something like that. I literally, I've had guys say that to me. Yeah. Um, don't have a, yeah. don't really understand the implications. It's, it's easy to justify our actions, you know. Um, also, we see women as objects. That, that, oftentimes. That too, you and know. It's not really worth having a high regard and respect for because oftentimes men see women as objects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you know, for, for me, I, I grew up very religious. I'm, I'm not very religious now. I grew up very Catholic. But to me, like, I, I don't think we live in a time where we're, we are prioritizing our character enough, you know, and I don't, I don't think we're thinking about our choices. I, th- I think we live in a time where we accept people who agree with us, and as long as we feel like we're in a room with like-minded individuals and we're we're okay with those those types of people in the same room, regardless of their choices and how they treat other people and their character and 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 how their choices affect other people and that recognition that in this in, in this moment uh, I might want this, but how how does this choice affect the people I say I love or care for? How does this choice affect myself? You know, I had uh, uh, Dr. Maya Shankar on my podcast, who's a behavioral scientist, and she talked about the empathy gap that we have for ourselves. You know, we're we're very rarely often thinking about future us, you know? How, how are our choices impacting ourselves in the future, you know? And I, we never really think about that as much. But I think, you know, we, we need to start prioritizing character and friendship. You know, what, what, does it be, what does it mean to me to be a friend? What does it mean to be a lover? What does it mean to be uh, a mentor to someone, you know? Because um, I think now at times, like when it comes to friendships, I think, you know, most people think friendships is, is about sharing secrets and having a good time, you know? But then when shit hits the fan, are you really there for your friends? You know, are you, are you willing to be the type of friend who uh, you see your friend doing some shit? You know, maybe it's them, you know, DMing a girl or something, they have a girlfriend. And instead of laughing at their, you know, behavior or thinking it's cool, you know, are you, are you willing to call them out? Are you willing to say, hey, man, that's not cool? Are you gonna Are you gonna be up for your girl? Are you gonna make me do? I don't want to do it. It's your job, you know. But are you willing to have a tough conversation, even at the risk of your friend you know, calling you a pussy or you know whatever or, or or things like that, or or say they're not going to be your friend? You know, sometimes being a friend is willing to lose a friend, and all we have is our character, regardless of of what you believe. I I hope that people can can want to you know, be good people and hold themselves accountable and treat other 
other people with respect, regardless of, of who their God is. Um, because I see, I see a lot of people who uh, talk about their faith and religion, and, and I see them on the street, and uh, they're not exactly doing what Jesus would do, so mm-hmm. to speak. So. And so how should men challenge other men who are cheating? Like, what does that conversation... Because I feel like a lot of men don't necessarily have that conversation. Yeah, and I, it's uncomfortable. I, I mean, there's an entire, like, bros before hoes. Like, sure. you know, it's I, a, I think an it, underpinning honestly, I, of masculinity. I, I think it, and I think it goes both ways, too. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. But because this is man enough, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, this is... A lot of men are listening and, and want to be able to, you know, have that uncomfortable conversation. How, how should they have that? Or do, should they? I think absolutely they should. Yeah, I mean, you just you better. To me, I I I feel good about myself, and I feel more masculine if I'm doing what I feel like is the right thing and protecting uh, people, even if I'm not necessarily. You know, I don't think being a friend is doing an action that might hurt someone else. That you're an accomplice. You're not a friend. Mm. Yeah. Um. And so, to me, you know, I think if you want to be a man, it sometimes again it takes standing up to people, standing up to people you call friends, and saying, "Hey, I love you, and I believe in you, mm-hmm. and it's because I believe in you, and I think you're a good person at your core. I'm, I am. I have the guts to tell you, I think you're doing a shitty thing right now. Mm. That's right. And I don't think you are being your best self. And I want to elevate you and challenge you to reconsider your choices. Yeah. And I will be there by your side, and I'm not going to leave you. And and even though she might, you know. Mm-hmm. but I will be here by your side and I will be a resource to you. But like, this is not, I don't, this is not who I think you are, you know, and it's who you're being right now. Um, but to me, that that's being a friend. Mm-hmm. To me, that's being a man. Mm-hmm.